leans on that and who is also the founder, the founder, right, of Restore America's Voice Foundation, Ken Hoagland. Thank you. Before I talk about Obamacare for just a moment, I want to talk about you. Because you're out here in the rain. And you know what? Somebody else talked about people like you. It dates from 1776. This is the only thing I have written because I don't want to get his words wrong. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he who stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Thank you. Thank you for coming out here. Thomas Paine, 1776. You're not coming to fight when the sun is out and the weather is fine. It's too important what's going to happen to our country. At the very heart of our grand experiment in liberty is a simple and noble idea that was unheard of in the history of the world. No law can be enacted without the permission of the people who will live under that law. It's called consent of the governed. It is the bedrock principle upon which our entire experiment and government is built. And yet Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid and Barack Obama knew that the American people had rejected a takeover of a fifth of our economy with Obamacare, and they did it anyway. When they did that, they crumpled up the very heart of our system of government. And that court over there is looking at the constitutional questions about Obamacare. I will tell you all right now that no matter what they decide, they are not looking broadly enough. Does the Commerce Clause allow mandatory participation in this bill? No, it doesn't. Whether they say it does or not, will we allow our elected representatives to ignore and treat with contempt consent of the governed? No. Now, the rest of the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, allows freedom of speech so we can decide what we want and we don't want in our laws. Freedom of assembly so we can get together and organize for or against the proposals that are before us. The Second Amendment so we make sure that we have a bulwark against the government reneging on our rights. All of that requires us to be the most active citizens that the country has seen in a hundred years. This is the worst law, the most intrusive law, to have passed our Congress since the income tax. The income tax was promised as only taxing the rich, wouldn't touch the rest of us. Ever since it was passed, the federal government has gained so much power that now they routinely sneer at the rights of states with the power of the purse. It does not only tax the rich, it was passed on lies the same way that this health care legislation, I will not call it Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act because it is the opposite. It was passed with the same kind of lies that we've heard now. Lie after lie, and I will tell you that no Democrat wants to stand up and defend it anymore, and that's why we must bring it up at every campaign stop, every appearance, every town hall meeting. What about Obamacare? And let's hear your justification. Thank you.